Books you won't put down. Grab the House of Lazenberry series by author Daniel Webb since his controversial interview at the Hip Hop Uncensored podcast. The books can't stay on the shelf. Grab the series The House of Lazenberry, The House of Lazenberry 1970H, and The House of Lazenberry A Time to Hill. Link in the description box now. Promote your brand here at Viral Hip Hop News. Email me, Sam Ant at thehiphopnews.com. No wait, let's go. Back to that. So I think the reason why we all fucked up right now is because. We take each other too damn seriously. I mean, fuck. Yeah. Up your ego down. So, yes, sir. Yeah, yes, sir. Facts. Talk about your experience in Hollywood. We 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 fortunate enough to have a lot of dope people come on our show, and we get to converse with, and especially brothers in Hollywood, and we yeah. all get a different perspective from anybody we talk to. From your perspective, been in the game for a couple of decades that you've been in it. How's your experience been in Hollywood? Has it been fair, foul, right down the middle? Everything that you got, you earn. Or have you ran into hurdles that, I mean, not to complain, don't seem real fair in the eyes of someone that's putting in the work as you are? Uh, it depends on the situation. Uh, there have been some fair, some foul, some right down the middle. It's like every situation is different. Mm. I remember uh, when I was pitching a show um, because my wife is Indian. She, she was born in India. Okay. And um, at that time, when I came out here, I was pitching the show, and I said, and this was when doing uh, that time, I think there was like a little surge. I think Denzel Washington did this thing called Monsoon Wedding or something. He was in some Indian flick. And uh, there was this, uh, remember this really popular Indian director, Namir Nair. And there was a lot of, you know, Bollywood was hitting and all that. And a lot of times, this was a lot of times when it, the, the diversity wasn't as high as it should have been as it is now. I think it's much more advanced than it was not then. And I would pitch, I'm like, yeah, you know, and there's an Indian woman. And they're like, ah, hmm, do we know any Indian actresses? I was like, motherfucker, have you seen any? There's a billion motherfuckers out there. You can't <laughs> find one Indian person. You know what I'm saying? And it was just like, they were just so disconnected because they didn't know. Uh, because it was something different that they didn't, they didn't understand or willing to understand. I don't know what the case was, but they were just culturally ignorant. That's what I like to say. There were a lot of culturally ignorant people in the industry that don't understand certain ways that folks talked, certain ways that they walked, whether it be black, Indian, Asian, they just didn't get it. You feel me? So there was a lot of, of that going around. Um, but as far as personally myself there was that there was one time there was it was stupid it was you know i had to walk out a certain indian when they said can you can you um i was in more gangster enough i've gotten that and i was like because i'm not a gangster i've never hung around gangsters right you know my my father would because i was afraid of my father my father you become a gangster i kill you myself i'm like all right, all right, all right. it's good for me i mean shit so i was living with a gangster you know what i'm saying so i never knew what it was like to be so that I, I I never thought of it as being racist or anything like that. I was like, y'all culturally ignorant because do you have you been around other black people? There's other ways that you could be hard, you know what I'm saying, or get this material in. So um that was a little and this was New York and LA in the in the business. So that was a little jarring. Um and then after that I would get envious and jealous when, especially when I saw, like I saw you had Donnell Rollins on. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, and that's good brother, funny as hell. Mm -hmm. And I would get jealous because he was with Chappelle. He was actually laughing. I was like, oh, motherfucker, all right, Donnell. Oh, man. And I see him more and more. I'm like, oh, Donnell's on the TV again. Oh, okay, good. Then he get a special like this motherfucker, Donnell. <laughs> and a brother get a break. Nigga, can you give us some job? Shit. <laughs> so it was there. There was a little bit of bitterness there because I was like, are they... Is there a Negro quota? I don't know. Damn. I mean, can I work? But then I realized there's certain timing that happens. You know, he was with Chappelle, which was perfect. They were great friends, and God bless them. And I and I'm I'm so happy for all the success. And then once I had to let my ego go and get my ego checked, I was like, all right, Mike, what do you need to do differently? How will you need to move? Let's strategize this. So uh, I earned this portion of it because of the pitfalls that I've been through personally, financially. I had managers steal from me. I had a manager stole $80,000 from me. Mm -hmm. So I've dealt with that shit. Um, so that was uh, a, a gut punch. I and mean, he was supposedly a friend. So I, re I realized in this business, especially with reps, um, you don't have friends 
as managers. They're not your friends. They're not your buddies. They're your associates, and you should treat them as such. Mm -hmm. So things like that really opened my eyes and was uh, a shock to the system. So, and I tell, you know, my daughter who's getting into this as well, um, you know, just, just, just to think about that. Your friends are the ones you came up with you around and the ones that aren't looking for a handout and the ones that will tell you when you, you're out of pocket mm -hmm. and when what you've done is shit. And they're not afraid to do that because they're afraid of, oh, this is my meal ticket. I might lose that. So all of that has really taught me lessons, you know, from being stolen from, from typecasting, from things like that that's happened that really has shaped uh, where I am right now. So I'm in a comfortable place where if I want to say no, I can say no. Um, and if I, if I have a concern, I can voice those as well. So, yeah, I have, it, it's been all over the place as far as situations with that, that situation, like with that manager, this typecasting, um, the, the pitch meetings that went wrong. All of that comes into play, man. Everybody has a story, you know, yeah. everybody, especially, you know, a minority being black, Asian, in it, everybody, especially being a minority and maybe some women as well have had that story of, you know, oh yeah, I had to do this in order to get this job. Right. Because it's, hey man, it's, it's a shady cut those ass business, man. And you have to really know yourself and be willing to say no and be willing to bite the bullet. Cause I'm going to tell you, man, sir, you know, waiting tables and, you know, and selling shit, uh, you know, going to Jamba Juice and trying to say, would you like a smoothie and a cookie? And like, no, excuse me. And like, God damn. <laughs> like, you know, and being in your thirties, that ain't fun. That's uh, not fun. It humbles the shit out of you. So you are appreciative when, you know, little bit of success comes your way. 